A battery manufacturer, XYZ Batteries, claims its batteries will last on average 20 hours. A consumer advocate organization suspects XYZ Batteries is exaggerating. They take a random sample of nine batteries. Stop there for a moment. Let's write that down. N equals nine. Nine is our sample size. They take a random sample of nine batteries and find the sample mean to be 18.3 hours. Let's write that down to X bar equals 18.3 hours. And standard deviation of 4.35 hours. So that's, that's S. That's a sample standard deviation coming from the sample. We don't know the population standard deviation, so we cannot use the normal curve. We'll have to use the T distribution for this one. Is this evidence at the 5% level of significance that XYZ is exaggerating? All right, let's go through the steps. So step one, the null and alternate hypothesis. Um, this is very similar to the Z test. Uh, the only difference is we'll use the T distribution instead. Um, so the null is, is the same as, as before. The null is um, that mu equals 20, that the company, XYZ Batteries, is not lying, that their claim of 20 hours is true. That, that's null hypothesis. The alternate says um, that they're exaggerating. In other words, the real mean is less than 20, so mu less than 20. All right, step two. Obtain sample and collect data. All right, let's check the conditions. Is the sample random? Let's write down the question mark here. Random. Well, it says it is in the question right here. They take a random sample. So we'll have to take your word for it and say yes. Um, next question. It's uh, for checking the conditions. Is the sampling distribution a T distribution? We're asking instead of is it normal, we're asking if it is it a T distribution. If n is greater than 30, anything is fine. Well, n is less than 30, so we have to make a histogram. And if there's a strong skew, then it's it's not valid to use a T distribution. However, we don't know. We don't have the raw data. All we're given is the summaries right here. So we 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 don't know. Uh, if it's a T distribution or not. So this question right here, I'll just draw an arrow and I'll just say, I don't know. We'd have to see the raw data to find out. Um, however, let's just pretend that it's a unimodal symmetric distribution and, and we'll keep on going. So next, uh, calculate the sample mean. Okay, we did that. Well, we didn't, but the consumer advocacy, advocacy group did. Uh, mean is here, standard deviation right there. So we just have to go straight to computing the T distribution. So X bar, which is 18.3 minus the null value, which is 20, divided by the standard error, which is S, which is 4.35. Divided by square root of 9. Okay, let's do these calculations. 18.3 minus 20 is negative 1.7. 4.35 divided by square root of 9. Let's get our calculator out. All right, here, here's the calculator. All right, so first, square root of 9 is just 3. So 4.35 divided by 3 equals 1.45. Okay, so now let's calculate. Uh, back to our calculator. Um, let's clear that here. 1.7 divided by 1.45 is 1.172. Uh, rounded off. Um, 1.172. That's that's enough digits for for this. Excuse me, negative 1.172. All right. Uh, step three, p-value. So um, let's draw a, a quick picture of our t distribution, our sampling distribution here. Zeros in the middle. Negative 1.172 is down here. Um, our our alternate hypothesis says mu is less than 20. That means we're looking at the left tail. We want to know 
the probability of if if we have a random sample, what's the probability that if the true population was 20, true population mean was 20, what's the chances of getting a sample mean of 18.3 or lower? That's that's what we're trying to answer. Now, um, by look at by looking at the die at the picture, it doesn't look like a whole lot, but um, there's a couple options here. One option is use the table. I've got the table right here. Um, oh, oh, our degrees of freedom is eight. Um, let's write that down on our screen here. Degrees of freedom is eight. It's always one less than sample size. Sample size is nine. Um, so on the table, you find eight degrees of freedom, which is right here. I can highlight, well, I guess I'll ha highlight everything up to eight degrees of freedom. Um, where is, so where would 1.72 be found on our, so 1.172, um, well, here's 1.1, 1 .1, right here, here's 1.3. So 1.172 is in between these two t-scores. Therefore, the tail probabilities is somewhere between 0.10 and 0.15. And so let's go back to our, our screen here. So we don't know exactly what the p-value is. Just a moment, let's get back to our pen here. Uh, but we know that the p-value is somewhere between Point ten and point one five. Now, that's not a great estimate, but it, it's good enough because all we really need to know is if the p-value is more than 0 0.05, because here it says 5% level of significance. So whatever it is, 0 0.12, 0 0.13, 0 0.14, whatever it is, it's definitely more than 0 0.05. So we know not to reject the null. Um, however, if you prefer, if you want a more precise p-value, you can go to our uh, web, this website that does these calculations for you, the normal curve and the t-distribution. So click t-distribution, type in eight degrees of freedom, and then click probability x less than negative 1.172, and click calculate, and you'll see one, excuse me, 0.137457. So let's just round that to 0.137. So you can say 0.137 for a more precise p value. All right. So now step four. Step four is uh, p value is pretty high, 0.137. So I do not reject the null. I say there's not enough evidence for something similar to that. Not enough evidence to uh, to convict, maybe, if you want to use that word. Uh, that's a little harsh. I'll say uh, not enough evidence to, to uh, state X, Y, Z, or let's just say this, none of the evidence that, forget that, to, um, that, here we go, not enough evidence that XYZ batteries um, are exaggerating. Now, they could be exaggerating, but we just didn't find evidence uh, that they're exaggerating. Um, uh, it, so in other words, uh, maybe the real mean really is 20 and the company's telling the truth and we just happen to, by random chance, we just happen to get 18.3 for a sample mean just by natural sampling variation. All right, that's it.